Hello YouTube. Good morning everybody. Um, today I have a helmet comparison video for you. One of uh, historical ones. Uh, you guys tend to really like these. So uh, today we have uh, France's first combat helmet. Well, not their first. If you if you've studied World War One uh, before the Adrian came out, uh, they had this kind of a uh, steel skull cap you would wear under the kepi. Uh, but not very many of those were made, and there's very, very few of them left in the world, because most of them were melted down to make Adrian's after uh, that design came out. So, uh, but today we have the M15 Adrian, and I know what you're saying, this isn't a French one. Well, it sort of is, sort of isn't. It was made in France for Russia, um, so it's still basically in Adrian, though, same rough construction, everything like that, because uh, I don't have an actual French one that's in this nice of condition, so... Um, so we're just going to use this as uh, the representation for the French Adrian today. And then we have the French uh, F2 helmet, as it's known. Um, if you want to see uh, this one without the cover, uh, it has its own video. I don't like to take the cover on and off this one because uh, it's held on with this big-ass rubber rim. It's very hard to line up, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. So um, I took it off for its own video. You can see see it without its cover in its own video. So... Um, so this is uh, what France still uses today. They use this in conjunction with, uh, uh, I believe it's pronounced feline or feline, if you're from, uh, if you're not good with French, uh, helmet, which is pretty much an ACH. It has a pad type suspension. It has like a, a weird kind of rail thing uh, on each side, and it has a uh, strange kind of night vision mounty optic device type thing that's really wide uh, right here on the front. Um, so, I haven't been able to get my hands on one of those, I've been really, really trying hard to track one down, um, but they, they don't come onto the market very often, because France is still producing them just to replace these, but these are still in use as of 2017, and, um, so, so here we have a hundred years of French helmet development, and they started out with, uh, the Adrian, and if you haven't seen my Adrian video, um, both of all, pretty much every, all of the Adrians I have have no liners in them, and that's not uncommon. Uh, they weren't held in very securely, and um, the Adrians are made out of kind of inferior metal, so it's hard to find the shells, let alone with the liners in them. But I do have some reproduction liners, and you can go back to my Adrian video and see what an original 1915 liner would have looked like, an early type liner. Uh, that would be the one with the crimson, the crimson wool in that video. So... Um, and the F2 here is um, what they use today still, and it's uh, reminiscent. Uh, it heavily influenced the Canadian CG634, so if you've seen uh, the F2 video standalone or my CG634 video, you will recognize this type of suspension um, again. Uh, but first off, we'll, we'll take a look at, um, push this one back, we'll take a look at the uh, Adrian all around. So here's the front. Uh, you can tell which side it's the front because of uh, every Adrian uh, that was made in France has a uh, bill, uh, has a badge on it, uh, so or holes for the badge. And uh, the uh, bill in the front is longer than the one in the back. So another way you can tell which is the back from the front is the comb goes all the way down to the back. Uh, this is the comb. These are made out of a four-piece construction, so the front bill, the back bill, the uh, dome and the comb are all uh, separate pieces, and they are all hooked together and riveted together uh, in various places. You can see some of the big, chunky rivets that hold the comb on, and normally these are smashed down, uh, but mine is still um, in very, very good condition, especially for a Russian one, which are rare within themselves. Uh, to find a Russian one that's in this nice condition. I'm very, very happy to have one of these. Now, if you understand anything about the French Adrian, you probably don't recognize all these rivet holes around it. Well, the Russians had a different attachment method than the little sets of prongs, because normally the French helmet, you would there would be little prongs that would be riveted right about here, and you would um, have bend these prongs to be sticking straight out, and then you would impale the liner over it and then you would bend the prongs over on the inside and that's how the liner would be held in and the, the Russians uh, didn't like that liner so they went to uh, they have eight 
holes that you put split rivets into, kind of like uh, the German helmets did. Uh, you would put split rivets into these helmets to hold in the liner. And it, it was a lot um, more replaceable, whereas the French helmet, if you broke off a rivet uh, or one of those little liner uh, prongs, uh, you pretty much had to junk the helmet. They weren't really repairable except for at a field armor, where this is a easy way to replace a liner in the trenches or in the field without needing much much assistance in doing so. So it's in in a way improved design. Uh, M nineteen fifteen A one as a joke for all you Americans out there. So, um, but uh, here you go. You can see see the combs kind of bent back here. Uh, this is the back. See the bim, uh, bill is not as pointy. Uh, we'll get you a look here. See the front bill is kind of pointy. Uh, back bill is kind of more rounded. Uh, and then here's the other side. Um, now we'll take a look at the inside. Now it doesn't have a liner, but you could tell that all of these were made in France because they will all have this horizon blue uh, type paint on them. Uh, this looks almost black or like a navy blue, and that's because um, in the early war they used a lighter blue. So the earlier ones will have a lighter blue on them and then uh, the later ones will have this darker blue on them and they were all painted in France before they were shipped to Russia um, so and then Russia repainted them this kind of green color uh, khaki olive uh, here's the little swivel bales for the uh, uh, chin strap and it would have had just kind of a normal your normal squared off with square buckle slider type chin strap it didn't have anything special on it because this is this is the grandfather of all modern combat helmets right here the adrian is so and we will switch it out for the uh f2 helmet now and as you can see this kind of has a, a pasgt or pasgat type profile because it pretty much is a copy of the u.s pasgat almost exactly except uh the french f2 doesn't have a rim on it like a rim cover like the u.s one does uh, because the cover uh, acts as the rim cover, so so this these helmets uh, you can easily point them out like that because they don't have a rim on them. Uh, also, by their uh, kind of smoother smoother texture and the fact that everything is held in ri with rivets instead of with screws. So uh, here's the liner, uh, very reminiscent of uh, the F1 liner. If you've seen my F1 video, it's pretty much an exact copy, just a drop in. Uh, because they actually had uh, a fairly comfortable helmet liner. Um, I like it anyways. There's a lot of people that have a beef with this this helmet liner uh, as far as these little straps that come over. I understand that. And there's ways around it um, and things like that. Uh, but different from the Canadian one is instead of having a big foam liner like you find in a British Mark VI behind all the webbing, all of the webbing has foam glued to it. Every part, even the crown pad has foam glued to the back of the suspension and that's how they dealt with the shock trauma and it's actually a pretty pretty nice way to do it and the chin cup is plastic and it's covered in uh chamois on the inside and just kind of a smooth leather on the outside everything is adjustable with velcro um so they all have slider buckles so regular old routing slider buckles and um not m type just just regular n type as i call them buckles uh, so, and, uh, D-rings, well, they're not really D-rings, they're, like, trapezoid-shaped rings to, and Velcro to adjust everything, so they don't, um, do all that much for the helmet, uh, it works pretty well, I do like the F1 type better with its snaps and stuff like that, rather than having this big, long piece of webbing you route through to hold everything in place, but this still works, um, still works very, very well, uh, there's the stamp on the inside, uh, CGF Galea SA 1997 is when this helmet was made, and this is a completely unissued brand new helmet. I was very, very glad to get one of these. I got it for very, very cheap uh, from somebody here in the U.S. Uh, when I was actually out garage sailing, uh, some other guy uh, in a town way far south of me, and I just happened to be bumbling around there after I was done at the uh, state fair. I had a few hours left because it was raining a little bit and starting to rain, so I wanted to leave the state fair, and I went out uh, garage sailing, and I found... This helmet from uh, some lady sell selling all of her husband's, uh, dead husband's belongings uh, to get some extra money. And uh, I bought a lot of stuff from her. Uh, bought a bunch of silk Tommy Bahama shirts, if you know what that company is, uh, for like 
ten dollars a piece brand new they still have the tags on them so i bought i bought like two hundred dollars worth of tommy bahama shirts i got a lot of tommy bahama shirts and a lot of helmets so and i ended up buying this one uh from him along with like four or five other ones so but uh take a profile around this helmet uh you can see the the left side of the helmet there it's the right side your typical pascat nape uh cutouts um right side uh this cover doesn't show the bill very well because the but it is just pretty much your standard pasgat aggressive slope uh bill so um hopefully you guys like this video and uh if you're new you subscribed um i very much appreciate it like i said there will be a hundred subscriber giveaway and uh once it gets closer i'll, I'll talk about what i have and what you guys would want as a giveaway so um but until then we will leave the the uh, video here please leave a comment if you have any uh, questions or suggestions for topics uh, for future videos I very much love to hear from you I do my best to answer every comment um, as long as it pertains to the video and everything like that so uh, if you have any trouble sizing anything or if you're looking for anything in particular I could hopefully help you track something down uh, if you want to see a specific video uh, or if you're just getting into helmets and you don't know a lot about helmets, if you just have a country that you like, chances are I have a helmet from that country. And I will do my best to uh, accommodate you guys. So, uh, till then, I will leave the uh, video here, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.